Hello, I'm Steve, also known as Tea Break Knitter on social media. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how I trap or catch floats when I'm doing stranded colour work. The reason I'd want to catch the floats is to avoid very long floats that can get caught in your fingers when you're wearing clothes and can also can pull the stitches out of shape. The other reason for catching floats is that with very long floats you can get tension issues. So I've got a piece of knitting here and I'm ready to start an area of knitting that is an area of seven stitches of one colour and so I need to trap the floats of that area. So I'll just start off the row, give myself some margins on the edge. So I'm now going to do a row of seven stitches in this lighter colour. And so I'm going to catch the floats. I'll catch the float in the middle of that area, so on the fourth stitch. One, two, three. Now I want to catch the float on this fourth stitch. So I'm working with the yarn in my left hand to make the stitches, and I want to trap or catch the yarn in my right hand. I start the stitch as usual. But before I wrap the yarn, I take the yarn from the right hand and wrap it around the end. I'll do that from the other angle. Yeah. Yarn from my right hand, wrap it around the end. And then I wrap the stitch as normal. I'll show you that again. Yarn from the right hand, round the needle, then wrap the stitch as normal. You then unwrap the yarn from the right hand and make your stitch. Once more, and I'll show you this end on. Insert the needle, wrap the right hand yarn, wrap the stitch as normal, unwrap the right hand yarn and make the stitch. That's three more stitches in this run. And now I'll do a run of dark coloured yarn from my right hand. Of course, you, the way you wrap is slightly differently. So again, one, two, three stitches. I'm going to wrap the fourth and the float is in the lighter colour this time. This time you just lay the float across and then Wrap your stitch as normal. From the top, lay the float across the top of the needle, wrap as normal and bring it down. And then the extra three stitches. Okay, now I want to show you this from the back, on the purl side, because the, the principle is the same, but the wrapping is slightly differently, different. So an edge stitch. I don't want to stack the, the catches on top of each other, so I'll just do two stitches this time, and then catch the float twice. Two stitches. I'm going to catch it on the third stitch. So once again, insert the stitch. Again, I'm work, working with the light yarn, put it over the top, and as I cross the working yarn to wrap it, you can see it's caught it underneath. Do that again. I've done that. So insert, insert the needle, lay the yarn across the top, work the stitch, and you undo the, unwind that yarn and make the stitch. I'll do that once more. 
because I'm catching it twice to avoid stacking the floats on top of each other. Put the needle in and you can see it's naturally lying under that yarn at the moment. Wrap it round, pull the yarn back and carry on. We're getting up to the run in the other colour now. To here I've only done six stitches. So knit one is normal. It'll catch the second stitch. So you put the needle through. This time we want to trap the right hand yarn. And it's slightly different. So this time you wrap the yarn the wrong way around the needle. So round clockwise. You then wrap your working yarn the same way as before, as the same way as normal, and then unwind the float yarn and make the stitch. So I'll show you again. Insert the needle, wrap the float yarn the wrong way round the needle, so clockwise, anti-clockwise with the working yarn, take the float back and you've now trapped the stitch. And now I'll show you the same thing again. Create the long floats in exactly the same positions. And this time I'll show you what's actually happening when we trap the float. So work our way to where the long floats are. Middle of the stitch again for working on the knit side a long float. So there we are. We're now ready to go again. The stitch is being made with the left hand yarn. So we take the float yarn, take it round the back. Now you can see that this working yarn is completely free of the float yarn at the moment. I wrap that round and as I pull it back you can see it's now catching on the back here. It's under the yarn like that. So we've now caught this yarn underneath the working yarn. that holds it close to the fabric. And just do the last one. Once again. Take the float and lay it over the top, of course the float's on the left hand yarn, and you can see as I bring this working yarn round it's already caught the float between the working yarn and the body of the fabric. And that's how the floats work, it catches the working yarn, the, the float yarn, between the working yarn and the body of the fabric. Just show you on the other side again to remind you pull it on tight. OK, 
okay, we've got the flute held in my left hand. We insert the needle, lay the flute over the top, make the stitches normal, and you can see here again the float yarn is now underneath the working yarn and held and trapped next to the fabric. Once again, across the top, wrap the yarn and pull it back. Work along to the next long float. And off we go again. So this time, of course the float is from your right hand and you're working with the yarn on your left. Take take your yarn around the needle the wrong way clockwise. You can see now that it's trapping the float yarn, holding it next to the fabric. Undo the float yarn and you've now got a stitch. Round anti-clockwise, make your stitch, pull it round the back and that has trapped that float. And just finish the row. So that's, that's the front side, you can't see the cork floats. And on the, on the back, on the long run here, you can see how the floats have been trapped in the middle of those runs to stop them pulling loose. So that's how I catch floats for stranded knitting. I hope this has been useful. Until the next time, happy knitting.